just for everybody to know, when I tried to pull up the NWA episode we're about to do, October 25th of 86, uh, it, it periodically is freezing. And when I say freezing, freezing more than normal. And for anybody out there who does watch the current product, whenever you watch the pay-per-views or specials now, you'll notice that they do freeze. I mean, they at least they do on mine, whether I put them on a Roku, whether I look at it on an iPad, or whether I try to watch it on a computer mine it will freeze periodically sometimes it doesn't at all and then sometimes it's it's almost impossible to watch and i'm just like oh fuck this i mean i'm not that invested in this to do it so uh doc's point is you got you got probably about a million people on the network right now i wouldn't be surprised if any of these promos freeze up on us so there you have it now let's get into this thing where i don't have any any other shout outs doc did the docaholics uh, remember we're recording this early so if any new patrons come in before this drops uh I, it's just that i haven't gotten them yet uh, i wasn't able to shout them out since we recorded this so far in advance we are again talking October 25th of 1986 of the NWA WCW Saturday Night on TBS. The show opens. It's the infamous angle where the horsemen are following Dusty and they attack him. Uh, then uh, we, we cut to the studio. Crockett tells us Magnum is, is doing better. And Shivani also promises huge news later in the episode. Uh, Doc and Harper, or Doc, you first. Anything from the opening. We're going to get a full cut of Dusty being attacked by the horsemen when they followed him in a car later. So that's why I didn't go too far in that, into that. You got anything else though, Doc? One small quick thing. The only thing I didn't remember, <laughs> and I got thrown off at first, is I thought that they were, I forgot there was two car loads. And I thought they were like, yeah, sailing him real close yeah. behind. <laughs> I was like, why are they doing that? And then I was like, oh yeah, fuck, I forgot. Because I haven't watched this in years. Yeah, this is I've, I've I mean this has been talked at at nauseum, but you're right. I haven't I haven't watched this and yeah, in forgot forever. they were in two cars. Yeah, uh, Harper, anything else from you? No. All right. I just like I was like fuck. Here we go. Yeah. Fuck up, fuck them up. Fuck them up. Yep. So <laughs> I'll save my thoughts on it since we're gonna get to it more later in the show. Uh, they do have a promo from Brad Armstrong here. Doc, did you have notes on it? I don't have any notes. I got the timestamp, but I didn't have anything memorable from it. Not that. one single note. No. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It just was. It's just, it's generic. Yeah. Uh, mid 80s, mid card, baby face yeah. stuff. Yep. Same thing. Hopper, you? No. All right. Well, after Brad's promo, Brad and Tim Horner face off against Bill Tab and Brody Chase. Horner and Armstrong win. Hopper, anything from that match? But they look good, man. That's two wrestling sons of bitches, bro. I, I know, say that huh? in the most sincere they way. They look good. They they are good. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. We're not bullshit. Would you here. call them like a a, a lower level uh, rock and roll express? The way they man. move in a ring. Uh oh, well, if the way they move, sure. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they are. They're good. I, I I think the only thing the two of them were missing was probably personality. Yeah. Charisma. The, Brad, between them. The maiden ingredient. Yeah. Well, and and the thing is, like, I don't the think the thing is, Brad actually had it to me. I mean, we've heard the stories about him backstage, but Brad had charisma. I just don't know if he ever showed it on camera. And I think I think there's a lot of people who have mentioned that about him. Doc, uh, any thoughts? It's on the somewhere in there. Look at everybody else in his family. He's got he's got great charisma. I it it just he just never showed it on TV. He started so, to show it a little, and y'all gonna y'all gonna laugh with the No Limit sh Soldiers. Come he's, on, <laughs> he started to show it a little, but so, by that point, by that point, he was already branded as you know Brad Armstrong. He'd already yeah. been Buzzkill and a yeah. Man, and, yeah. right? And then once you wear uh, that, once you've got that label on you, then it's like uh, you can't really get past it. Well, I just. I was watching Horner here, and I just thought he looked like Terry Taylor's hillbilly stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, any, any other fine analysis, Doc? Well, at some point, I guess we're going to talk about the, the whatever the Pee Wee team that's there in attendance this week, that their year-end season-ending party was to go to wrestling. Sounds like a good idea on a Saturday morning. See all those kids with the matching jerseys? Yeah, I did. I'm looking at it right now as I'm about to play Boogie's next promo. Uh-oh. Willie, Willie! Willie, Willie! All right, y'all. With that said, Jimmy Valiant is up next. Here it is. 
One match already signed for Shark Cade 86, hair versus hair. Let's bring in the boogeyman, Jimmy Vine. You got Paul Jones in the ring, but this time you put up the hair of Big Mama. Brother, Tony, I'm so excited, baby. Woo, Missy, I'm excited, man. I want to talk to my people and my brothers and sisters. We got him. We got him. Paul Jones will be a ball headed geek. Big Mama, my Big Mama, my color, my flower lady. My mama is going to put up every gorgeous red hair on her head against Paul Jones's dirty, stinking, greasy black hair. And you know what I mean. Yeah, you know something, Mr. Paul Jones? Every woman's hair is their crown and glory. And Big Mama, your boogeyman loves you more than life. I love you. I'll die for you. I'll kill for you. Everything, baby, is me and you. And you know that for sure. And now, if Paul Jones, if you beat me, every hair on Mama's head will be shaved. And if I beat you, you will be a bald-headed geek. And Tony, to sum it all, baby, just read this shirt. Say Paul Jones first. Paul Jones, the boogeyman will get you. All right, all right. We're coming all right, right back. Cocaine's a hell of a drug, bro. Yeah, no, huh? <laughs> to to <laughs> offer, offer anything else from you? I want to go... I'm going to watch this match. I want to see if... I... I hope the fuck she gets her head shape, but that's, you know, that's not going to we'll, happen. We'll watch Starcade. We yeah, watched Starcade yeah, last year. Yeah, the thing is, we'll, we did Starcade last year, so we're, we're going to see it. We'll probably, have to right. do it in, we'll probably have to do it in two parts again because it's so oh, yeah. long that we had to break it up. So What we uh, should do is do the first part of every match for free and put this, the our <laughs> analysis at the end behind the page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, I always wanting to put it behind the paywall. I hear that. Okay, um, Doc, any thoughts on Jimmy? Man, he's recovered nicely in just the span of one week. Um, and basically, he gave the 1986 ride-or-die version, man. He was talking about his bottom bitch and, you know. <laughs> she's just, that was a she's riveting. Just thing. He lifted up that, that beard. I was like, shit, I bet everybody in there got high when he did, when he did that. <laughs> but uh, you what it smells like. Yeah. I'm surprised. Uh, Tony Schiavone didn't fucking pass out right there. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> um, but all in all, I mean, I thought this was pretty good for Boogie. I mean, he he stayed on point, and he's he's working on the feud, so that's better than some other ways this could have gone with him. So I really thought this was pretty good. I did too, and I think I said this last week. He's got They've... fired too. I mean, he's mad. This is his thing. Well, and they've done a they've actually done a really good job with this entire thing cuz it went from you know Pez, you know, getting his hair shaved and then Boogie getting his hair shaved. And if you remember, Boogie Paul Jones's hair was on the line when Boogie got his head shaved. So like they've continued this and I mean it's been months in the making, so there's actually some history to it and while it's just a mid-card feud, I, I mean it's it's not bad. And, and not Boogie, everybody can be fighting for the NWA heavyweight strap. Yeah. Yeah. You only have you only got one world champion. All right, so I thought it was good too. Now after so after Boogie, we got a match: Jimmy Garvin versus John Savage. I think this is John Savage's first time on Saturday Night since we started bro, doing these. Bro, he don't look like no '86 uh, jobber to me though. Yeah, he looks good. Well, go ahead, Doc. What else you got on him? That guy was fucking built. Yeah, he. That's he's all not I got. A, I think he's from England. Yeah, That's all I know. He's not he's not small to say the least. Hopper, uh you had anything from the match there? It's just uh, that guy looked good, man. Yeah. He um I'm trying to think there was somebody else that we had said the same thing about at one point that uh had a nice looking build. I can't remember his name. Every now and then uh, you'll get a you'll get a jobber who or enhancement talent who got a nice little build, looks good, but you know, you just don't know who they are. But yeah, he did. Now Garvin beats him very quickly with the rainbow. Yeah. I mean, he didn't take his pants off. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he beat him quickly. So, Doc, any thoughts on the match? No, it was too fast. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess he just took Magnum's gimmick, and we just keep moving. <laughs> yeah. So after after that match, uh, Crockett updates us on Magnum's condition. I am going to play that. Here it is. 
And we're here with Jim Crockett, Jr., president of Jim Crockett Promotions, an update on the condition of Magnum TA. Uh, on behalf of Magnum TA and his family, I want to thank all the wrestling fans for all the many cards and letters. Again, please don't call the hospital. He's doing very well. But if you'd like to send Magnum a card or a letter, this uh, address they're going to put up on the screen for you. He, the cards and letters are really cheering him up. If anybody can get back from this uh, terrible injury, Magnum can. It's going to be a long haul for him. And our prayers are with him. Okay, there's your address to write to Magnum TA. Fans, when we come back, we'll go to the Starcade Control Center. Don't go away. Uh, so, all right, everybody out there, don't call the hospital. Only write. The, the calls are clogging up the phone lines and whatnot, and they can't uh, tend to Magnum appropriately. And, uh, Hopper, any thoughts on the update we got on Magnum and uh, how to contact the hospital? Well, I called the hospital, and they told me you stopped calling. That was like 30 years ago. <laughs> That's nice, huh? That's nice. You know what I, you know I want to do? Oh, Send a postcard to this fucking address just to see what happens. Just says like, good Get well, Magnum, and just to see, just to see what happens. <laughs> Is this kind of strange that they don't have it? They don't have the address, right? They don't got it like uh, blurred out, right? <laughs> Do it, Hopper. See if I'm gonna go to Walgreens and get one of those uh, New Orleans postcards with like Mardi Gras and shit on it. Send one while, to them. <laughs> while you're at it, why don't you send a fifty-eight cents to Ron Wright's post office box too, so that he can get that. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Corny said Ron got like 13 bucks sent to him when he was uh, trying to raise money. Oh, that's nice, Hopper. Uh, Doc, any thoughts from the update? It was real quick. I I heard Rick say that's a shoot that they actually were like, come on, people, y'all got to stop because we're trying to right. do medicine in here. Yeah. Yeah, everybody was calling and they were just constantly trying to get in touch with him. Well, not in touch with him, but well, Which, wishes. Okay, so, so let me just bring it back to this. I ain't trying to say that I hope anybody on the current, just because I don't watch the product, I mean, I want anybody to like die or nothing. But if something like that happened today, would there be that kind of outpouring of support? Hell, uh, no, no. Well, There'd be a bunch of social media grandstanding. Right. But I yeah. mean, like, let's go have a candlelight vigil and stuff. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. I think I think you'd still have a a small population who would write letters like this, but most people are gonna. You know, put in their passcode on their phone, open up their Twitter. Magnum, we love you, and they're gonna grandstand. And um, and here's the thing about not everybody who quote unquote grandstands like is is malicious, but like there are some people who actually mean it. But there's just some people every time a fucking celebrity dies or is something yeah. happens, they're writing a fucking novel on Facebook and Twitter. So I yeah, just you... want to tell it. I just want to tell everybody this. Jesus is not sitting up in heaven with a thermometer like a telethon waiting on your prayer to decide whether or not he's going to intervene in the medical calamity in somebody's life. Let's be That's clear. Nice. Let's wow. be clear, Doc. You're not an atheist. You actually do believe in, in, in a God. In, what I believe in is my own business. Pal. Okay. He yeah. <laughs> answers don't... to his own set of demons. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's keep going here. Uh, since Doc pissed off all the religious folks who uh, listen to us. We got a Starcade update from Tony Schiavone. Schiavone walks us through uh, when the Midnight Express were attacked by the Road Warriors. And then they show the Road Warriors training. It looked like they were training in the same gym that Baby Doll was training in when she was getting ready for her match with Cornette. Um, and then, I hadn't planned on playing this. I'll, I'll get you guys' thoughts on it. Uh, the Road Warriors do cut a quick promo. Oh, and, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> it's uh then Shivani tells us the Warriors have a surprise for Cornette in the in the Midnight Express. The Royal Warriors announce a scaffold match in the night of Skywalkers of the Skywalkers. Hawk drops the pumpkin from the scaffold and it splatters as expected on the ground. Uh the pumpkin has Bobby's name on it. Now let me tell you all something that you don't know because unless you went and watched the, the 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 episode of Worldwide from this week that Tim Morecci gave us, the let me say let me say this. The music that plays during this segment, if if you think the Road Warriors hitting the ring, not coming out to their regular music is bad, listening to the dubbed in music during this segment makes this segment worse. When they actually play, what song is it, Doc, that the Road Warriors come out to? It's Black Sabbath, dude. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. When they actually, I want, I knew you, I was trying to throw it at you just for a second, but when they play Black Sabbath and Iron Man on the actual episode, this segment had so much more impact to it. Cause you hear that Black Sabbath, which even a uh, old school R and B and rap fan like me can appreciate is something about that fucking pumpkin splattering and you envisioning uh, cornet splattering uh, with uh, some uh, Iron Man playing in the background. So, uh, Doc, I'm going to throw it to you first. Any thoughts on that segment? I want to live at the Starcade Control Center. Yeah. Dude, I, I have a feeling that like all the latest news is there, and I want to be there so when it first comes in so that I know first what's going to happen at Starcade 86. Uh, here's something I agree, Hopper. Any other thoughts from you on like the stuff with the ro- warriors or anything there? And uh, that Star shit was cheesy. Center? It was cheesy. Yeah. Well, when, when I was watching him in a control center, I, I was like, he's doing a, a Sean Mooney impersonation. <laughs> and then, uh, and that pumpkin, bro. It took. They shouldn't have done it in slow motion. I mm-hmm. kept waiting. I was like, "Come on, get yeah. the ground. Come on, bro. Come on." You almost there. Oh fuck! And when they did something, because Den- they didn't have one for Dennis. Yeah. They probably got there and were writing names on him, and were like, "Wait." They're like, "We fuck. only bought, we only bought two pumpkins." They're probably like, "Wait, does fucking Dennis got two ends of one? Fuck, I misspelled it." <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh. The music did sound better on the original, but I agree. It, it, the they slowed that pumpkin down, and that because it would be more impactful if you just see that. Well, pumpkin they were splatter. they were off smashing pumpkins. That was nice. Get it? Oh yeah, get it. Yeah. Well, I guess. is this where they announced the get match? Though. Uh, yeah. yeah yes. Got it. Yeah, that's where they announced it. So let me just say three words to describe this match. Fuck a scaffold, bro. You ain't lying. They showed him get up there, and I was like, I would get up on that rickety piece of shit for this promo. Dude. You eat it. I ain't I going saying, up there. If this was today, you wouldn't have had talent walk up that. that they should have done it then. Right, because they're just climbing that shit like it's, like it's two kids climbing fucking monkey bars. I mean, that's got liability written all over it, man. <laughs> the fucking animal's holding a fucking... The, the microphone so he's got like one hand let me let me tell you when i actually like the scaffold match from star k86 but i'm thinking to myself in my mind i hate that i hate that match i hate that type of match the whole scaffold match thing is stupid to me but i'm thinking the whole time the fucking warriors are two big bastards and they're up on that scaffold. And then you got the fucking Midnight Express. They, I mean, you can't do anything because you're high on a scaffold. And we're going to talk about it once we watch it. But I'm thinking to myself, when I see Corny swinging from that scaffold, I'm like, <laughs> and I had already, I mean, it's hard to go put, put yourself back in the first time you saw it. But I'm thinking to myself, this shit can't end good, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's just, I, Corny's going to respond to this later in the show. And I, I, I'm looking forward to us talking about that part of it because I want to ask Harper, you know, well, Harper, I'll ask you right now. If, if Luke told you, you you had to climb a scaffold and fall from it, what, what would you be? He couldn't pay me enough. It's been I a know. good run. Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, bro. <laughs> it, it just you, you 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 couldn't pay me enough. Yeah, yeah. Because I no remember uh, I listened to one of the on his uh, on a uh, Cornette's podcast. He said. They got ten grand each for doing the uh, the second one. With, uh, well, and here's the other thing: rock and roll. I get, I get that New Jack is crazy, but what's the odds that another crazy wrestler is just gonna get up there and decide to throw you off as far as you, they possibly can? You talking about when New, when uh, New Jack threw uh, Vic Grimes off the? Yes. That's a different type of scaffold match, though. I don't care. I mean, you, I come, you come that from actually, that far. That was a little different. The shit they won looked a little sturdier than the shit the Road Warriors were on. But I agree. Well, New Jack gets up there and flings that motherfucker off. And <laughs> it's a miracle he didn't die. Shit. But I, I, man, you couldn't pay me to. I didn't climbed on some no. shit and jumped off of it. But I had <laughs> fuck a scaffold, bro. Fuck that, that shit. That shit's wobbly, bro. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Ain't no way. But all right, so let's keep going. They're just out there 
like loot. What a rush, and up yeah. the scaffold they go. Fuck that. And that's a lot of weight, too, bro. You damn right it is. Yeah. I mean, they're no fucking cruiserweights. Right, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Wait till you see it. It's 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 unreal. Like, And there's no way that the Road Warriors are as light on their feet as a fleet of Mexican scale in that thing <laughs> to do some real work. Oh, that's nice, Doc. But it's true, though. Hey, man, I got a lot of respect for those Mexicans that climb the scaffolds. They do real work in this world. Work us honkies refuse to do. That's that's nice, Doc. That's that's nice. That, congrats. Just pissing off a nice segment of our fucking audience. How is that pissing dipshit. them off? I give them credit for being hardworking. That's the truth. Right. Remember, remember my, what remember attitude, my whole, they're, they're from the country of Mexico. I said Mexicans. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. So, uh, the last part of this, uh, Starcade, like, update, or from the fucking control center, the Sean Mooney control center, uh, is, uh, Shivani and Crockett, they update us on Jimmy Valiant versus Paul Jones, where, uh, Manny will be in the cage, 20 feet above the ring, so we, we do find that out, Manny is actually gonna be in a cage. Is that Betty Lou? Ring. Betty Lou, yes, he will be in Betty Lou, 20 feet above the ring, and then, <laughs> Yeah, um, Betty's in Betty Lou, pal. And then they tell us J.J. Dillon is proposing a first blood match between Tully and Dusty for the NWA TV title at Starcade. Now, I got a worldwide promo I'm going to play later in this episode of J.J. and Tully in a stipulation that they throw on the NWA in relation to that match. So we'll, we'll play it when we get to it. Now, uh, Doc, any other thoughts on the Starcade Control Center? Man, I'm ready. I, I'm ready to get there, man. All right. Uh, Harper, anything else from you? No. All right, lastly, before we get to the horsemen jumping Dusty in the parking lot, we got Shivani and Crockett. They do discuss the scaffold match briefly, and then they talk a little Dusty versus uh versus Tully. Nothing, nothing like of extreme importance. So let me get us to the to the to the 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 segment where we got the horsemen who jump Dusty. Here it is. Right there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's him. <laughs> hey, go on. <laughs> oh, boy. Only and I right on his tail. Don't let anybody get in. That's it. I don't think he's seen us. That's it. Once you get him in that parking lot, there's no turning around. He'll never get out. Come on, turn, turn, turn. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's turning. We've got him. <laughs> we got it right where we want him. That's it. Take it easy, Arn. Take it easy. Not too close. Not too close. Come on. Come on. In the parking lot. He's 20 feet come behind on. him. Not too now close. He... Yeah. Right back there to Crockett's office. <laughs> we got him now. <laughs> this isn't going to be very smooth. <laughs> Don't you worry. Just keep that camera running. Stop it right there. Uh, this is obviously 30 years old at this point. 30, over 30 years, almost 32. Uh, Harper, any thoughts? 
I kept waiting to hear someone say World Star. World Star. <laughs> it would have made World Star back in the day. Yeah, but nah, man. Yeah, he's I mean, they're fucking him up. They got him crucified, tied up to the uh to the uh work truck and uh you know, beating the shit out of his arm. Yeah. And, and of course the fucking uh blurring the blurring the arm and a hand fucking adds to it, like it always does. Putting that black spot over yeah. over it always. They kind of they did that to Brian Lee when mm-hmm. Sullivan butchered him. Always adds to it. Because uh, as a kid, you're fucking wondering. Oh how yeah, bad you, did it look? Yeah, yeah. You you think it's but you're like, oh shit, that must really be bad. They can't show it on TV, right? Oh, he's, he's probably missing up. fingers. Yeah, <laughs> they probably clipped some fingers off that motherfucker. Uh, Doc, uh, what did you think? Man, this is a, just a straight out and out crime. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> this is some criminal activity, man. And that's what made it great is that you're used to seeing somebody get jumped inside the building, whatever. It's in the context of the arena where all this stuff is supposed to happen. And I always say, and I love anything that's like outside the arena, like with, you know, it was. Tracy on the back porch and Smoky Mountain or whatever. That stuff's always good, but man, it's just got that edge to it that this is a crime. This is this is we've spilled out of the ring into real life here. Let me they remind you. The, they caught him at the you. at the offices. Let me remind you. Last week, JJ was talking about getting Buck Bob Geigo involved because of what Dusty did. Right. <laughs> he was going to take legal Well, action. maybe, you don't know. Maybe this past week they talked to Bob Geigel and they didn't like his answer. So they said, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. Well, the hypocrisy yeah. of the heel there is the point. Of I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see no hypocrisy. Okay. The other thing that makes this thing great is the cameraman not wanting to do it, but them telling him he got his money. So shut up and do it. And film yes, it. <laughs> shut the fuck up, asshole, and do it. Do your job. Yes, and, sir. Uh, and the other thing that's just, I, I didn't remember this. Whatever, I ain't no wrestling historian. But I can't believe they went through and showed this kind of violence and angle and, you know, imagined violence with Magnum in the damn hospital. Yeah, that's yeah. true, huh? Why not? It, it's 1986. Because I live in 2018, and that would have never happened now. They'd have canceled that whole angle. No, nah, man, this is mm-hmm. perfect. This is perfect on the oh, heels of I that. Did, I did, the the I great baby think. face, the, the number two baby face, got injured in a bad car accident. I um, didn't say that they shouldn't have done it then. It's great. I'm just saying you wouldn't get it. I'm just surprised. Oh, I mean, you ain't. These days, everybody's such a tit mouse. They can't have a real angle. They they strung him up to a truck and beat him till he broke something. <laughs> they crucified and him. Then, and then yeah. he's got to be somewhere the next night. Yes. That ought to lead you into the next segment, pal. You're welcome. It does. It does. Thank you. Let me. Let, I'm glad you said that. So he's got to be in Charlotte the next night, and he's going to be facing JJ. Why? And Oli. Um, I don't know, but I don't really care. I'm gonna I'm gonna narrate us through uh, because since you can't see it, I'm gonna play the first part. Shivani and Crockett throw us to Charlotte, and then I'll Damn. narrate you through it all. So here it is. Let's listen. Okay, you heard JJ said, we'll see you tomorrow night in Charlotte. Now, the contract said if Dusty or his partner lost the match, then Dusty could not be a part of Starcade. But Dusty said, I will be prepared that night. And he would have a partner. That sets the stage. Was Dusty prepared? Let's see it right He was, but I don't think any of us were prepared for this. Let's take a look at it. All right, so Ole is in the ring with JJ. And Dusty is heading to the ring, and he's followed by Nikita, of all people. Why? And, and the crowd. What's going on here? The crowd, they're cheering, but you can still kind of see, like, huh? Some of them, at why, least. At why least, is he behind Dusty? Right. What the fuck's going on? Now, Dusty entered the ring. Nikita's still on the outside. JJ looks goofy as fucking tight, but whatever. And Dusty just says, screw it. I'm going to attack. JJ and Oli. Nikita's still looking cautiously. Now Nikita says, fuck that, I'm attacking. And did you hear the crowd erupt? Uh, Nikita's helping Dusty. All right. Nikita's attacking Oli. These people are going crazy, Hopper. I know, huh? 
All right, they're about to finish off JJ here. Listen to this. <laughs> now remember, Dusty has a cast on his arm, and he's fucking. He hit JJ coming off the top rope. And now he's bludgeoning JJ in the head with with the cast. I mean, beating the piss out of him. JJ on Worldwide, I think this same week, looks like he looks like he's been in a fight. I mean, it looks like he's, he's got two black eyes. It's ridiculous. Um, but then they, the JJ's still in the ring after all this time, and they finally like dump him out. And, and JJ is bloody. He is busted open pretty damn good. As the people go crazy. Let's see if we can hear what Ric Flair says. He's, he's mumbling under his breath. Rick can't believe it. It just froze, actually. So uh, I, that's that's fine. We didn't have to go any further. Uh, Doc, thoughts on everything we watched? Well, isn't this certainly a turn of events? It's pretty damn incredible, man. Okay, so the first thing I need you to do is please, for the love of God, tell me at the end. When Nikita went to the – before Nikita goes to the top rope, after it's all over, to cheer with the crowd – Dusty's up there cheerleading him on, and behind Dusty in the crowd is this dude. Who? <laughs> and he's got his shirt like over his shoulder, and he's flexing along with Dusty. Oh and yeah, and he's yeah, kind of a true. big dude. <laughs> yeah, and, but he looks like he's like forty-five years old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that may, that guy deserves the. He may. He's. A, let me just say this. He's in contention for the rolex just for that couple of seconds <laughs> that yeah. was awesome uh well it looks like we've now got a number two baby face in the promotion although he can't talk so we've got a little bit down from there from magnum but certainly he strikes the same level of uh imposing figure uh you know who used to care about wrestling People in the southeast in 1986. That's who. Jesus Christ! They, yeah, that, no, I'm... it does not uh, look. <laughs> Mike's Mike audio and internet and the network is all terrible there. It doesn't come through very well. It was kind of quiet. That they they that place popped. That's what a pop sounds like. I mean, well, Hopper says it all the time. Whenever we see stuff from the local venues, it's like it's people. It's it was the equivalent back then of people watching nowadays their favorite sports teams. And but you know, when, it, when a big shot happens or a big play happens, and, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, or or your team gets or your team gets knocked out of the playoffs on the final play. <laughs> yeah, just like what happens to your Cowboys last year when uh, the Packers kicked their ass out. Yeah, that kind of pop. What? Why are you gonna bring up old shit? Well, because you bring up bullshit all the time when you talk about past Super Bowls that y'all have. So let me change gears. You decades. know what? No, if, you brought it you up, see, motherfucker. You, no, you no, see, see, see. Why? Why are you so hot? You brought you it see, up. Why are you so Don't mad? fucking pick a fight if you can't fucking handle it and what your big you draws. See, if you see JJ in the ring in 1986 <laughs> in tights, that motherfucker's eating a pen. <laughs> <laughs> These people went nuts. Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna throw it to Hopper and get his thoughts. That was that was a genuine response of we didn't expect this shit to happen, but we're sure as fuck glad it did. Yeah. <laughs> that was it, yes. That I mean man, look. It, man, if you're booking if you're you think Dusty, because he's booking this, he got to the back and was just smiling, going, I told you motherfuckers this would work. <laughs> Because you this, know when he mentioned making Nikita a baby face, people looked at him like he had lost his mind. Well, here's the thing, bro. I don't want to like – this is – it's kind of political, but it's not. We're still in the middle of the fucking Cold War back then. Straight, um, in the, straight the up in it, dude. And shit. Yeah. Yeah. So like 
I mean, I don't think today people young realize. Like, I I remember as a kid, I don't think we came in, came up in a generation where we really thought something was going to happen. But in the back of my mind, you know, I had a grandfather who fought World War II. Um, you know, let me say parents, this. No, let I me say believed, this. I believe in the, the, I believe. the airmen. Yeah. When you, go ahead. Go ahead, when, go ahead, Doc. When you saw them in the Olympics, that was the evil. They, I was like, these people are evil. That that's Satan. Yes, that's yeah, what they I'm were saying. always the bad guys. The Cold War was real. I mean, I don't think people like, and it was a different type of real than than you think of from like the Taliban and and Muslim extremists. Uh, that's now, real. These people don't didn't you? eat lizards. They had their shit together. And they were coming for oh, us. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Doc. Uh, my point is... Yeah, they like, weren't fucking camels and shit. Okay. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I'm not trying to get political. I'm trying, trying to, like, bury anybody's, like, religion. My point is, the, the, the like, Cold War was real. Like, like uh, if you let our parents and grandparents tell it, man, the, the finger was on the nuclear button at any point in time for both countries. And... Through back channels, it never happened. But my point, but so like, it's just crazy to think in '86 that the number two babyface in Crocker Promotions in the motherfucking South would be Nikita, and the people went nuts. <laughs> they accepted him right away. It's crazy. Because so Dusty I, told, because Dusty told him to. Right. He it's, he he put his hand on it. That's right. It's almost like it, if in like Rocky Four, Austin Dolph Lundgren. Helps out Rocky, and you know, it just, oh, yeah. I, That's I mean, great man. It was so. Off the heels of that, we moved to Dusty and Nikita in the TBS studios, and I got to tell y'all, the network is fucking up. So if it's if it's you stalls, don't need to play it anyway. Well, it's, half it's, of it, half of it's Nikita, man. Come on. Well, yeah, and it's a, and it's it's real somber too. It's not like a I rah rah. Mother Russia or to Uncle Ivan. Well, what I if, do what I want. I'm grown, the, bitches. The, the funny thing is, he t- he basically told Ivan Koloff to go fuck himself. Well, that's mm-hmm. a bad move. He yeah. told Uncle Ivan, Uncle Ivan, you go fuck yourself. <laughs> he really did tell him that. But uh, hey, let's let, let me throw this out y'all at y'all. Based on the fact that Magnum got injured, this was a good audible to me. You couldn't. Have, I don't know who else you could have did this with. I really don't. Because so well, yeah, later on, you're going to hear from Rick Rude, and I said last week maybe Rick Rude, but I was looking at him going, he's too much of an asshole to be a number two baby face. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say that in a Sincerely. good way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in a wrestling sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 this was good. This was good. I, I like this. Uh, something else. I did watch a worldwide from last week. I was talking to Tim Morecci online and I did find a segment on the previous worldwide where David Crockett or not David Crockett, uh, Jim Crockett Jr. actually says that the world heavyweight title was going to be either between Dusty and Rick or, or Ronnie Garvin and Rick. So that was the plan. One of those two. And then when Magnum got hurt, uh, that went out the window, and all of a sudden, even though Magnum was not going to wrestle Flair, they needed a number two baby face, so it got shifted to where it was uh, Nikita versus Nikita versus Rick. So, or, or we'll see. I mean, and Rick says it in a promo at the end, right there. You can't, you can't really hear it, but he says, "I don't believe it." Did y'all see when he mouthed? Well, Rick called him an it. asshole too. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> did he? Yes. yes. Yeah. I didn't catch that. It was real low, and you'd have to read his lips. But yes. So this is this is uh this is quite the turn unexpectedly especially after you just lost your number 2 baby face. Well, guess what? We got a Russian who's now going to fight for America. There you go. There you have it. Uh hey, uh so we got a, we the, the next match up is going to be Ole and Arn versus Randy Barber and Clement Fields. I do want to remind you if you're listening on YouTube, this is just one portion of the show. So to listen to the show in its entirety, you can find us anywhere you get your podcast from. Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcasts, Attic Tuning Radio. Just search Book in the Territory, subscribe however you get your podcast and never miss a show. Between Ole and Arn and Randy Barber and Clement Field, Ole and Arn win. Ole gets Fields to submit with an arm bar. There you go, some old school. Hopper, any thoughts on that match? No, it was just uh, something different to have him tap out. I don't think he tagged out. I don't think he did either. It was real quick. 
let's be real. There were no matches on this. This this card, no. this show was about uh, Nikita in the announcements for the scaffold match, and that's pretty much it. We were limited it, there. And to stop calling the fucking hospital. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Doc, anything from you? Just a beat down. Yeah, pretty much. All right, we're going to try to play this promo here. This is Corny, and he's going to be responding to the the Warriors in the scaffold match. Here it is, if it plays. Okay, we're back with you on World Championship Wrestling. The momentum. And talk to me now about being a high flyer. Being way up in the air. I didn't mean all the things I was saying about flying that high. Let me you know you did the interview. You know what kind of thing you're talking about? A scaffold match. That's the most dangerous kind of match that there could ever be. The most dangerous. To actually have a wrestling match on a scaffold a few feet wide, 20 feet near up over the ring, which is even more of a drop to the floor. You got now. I know where Paul Ellering and the Road Warriors have been. They've been in a rubber room over at the Puzzle Factory with them custom-made jackets with the long sleeves. Cause the anger, the frustration, the humiliation, and the pain of what they suffered at our hands has run them crazy, and they have gone totally off the beam. And now they've dreamed this thing up. Cause only an insane, irrational person would ever want to want to be a part of something like this. Because of exactly how dangerous it is, Tony Chavati and Paul Ellering. I don't know whether or not that you care about what happens to those two big idiots yours but i care about my boys they're close friends of mine as well as being managed by me and i'm scared they ain't scared but i'm scared for them and you never drag me up on top of that thing but you know what they're doing tony they're trying to put the big one over on us we're too tough we're too bad we can't be managed and we can't be stopped so they're trying to put the big one over on us and jim crockett and the nwa and everybody else is trying to let them get away with it a mess like this it can not only be the end of your career it can be the end of everything but i'm gonna tell you something road wars and paul edward you better watch out for us because if we even lay eyes on you before thanksgiving night by the time that starcade rolls around you ain't gonna be able to climb up on nothing any taller than a hospital bed i promise you that because something's gonna be done about this thing we ain't getting up on no scaffold jim Cornette fans we're coming right back all right let me translate what jim Cornette Sarah said there over the course of two minutes he ain't getting on no fucking scaffold that's what all that was about i think he was also saying i'm still trying to tuck jim crockett out of this shit <laughs> Uh, probably, but he, he definitely, he ain't getting on no fucking scaffold if you listen to him right there. Fuck that scaffold. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> They're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck that. Uh, Harper, uh, or, or, keep going, Doc. You got anything else? No, I, I think he's legitimately like, no, no, no. Well, he Jimmy don't like heights, bro. You know that. So he's really telling I don't the like truth. heights. I don't blame him. Yeah, yeah, fuck that, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Imagine talking. being up there. No, like, I can't. Imagine no. like seeing it, you know, like like from the distance. You're like, oh well, it doesn't look that bad. Then you start climbing it, and you're like, fuck this shit. Then you get up there, it's, it starts moving around. Then then some other three hundred pound asshole, then the other three hundred pound asshole climbs up. Then it really starts fucking shaking, and it's and you fuck because you can't. You, you have to go through with it. No, I'd be like, no, I'm going to go on back to the back. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tag out. Uh, fuck that. Mm -hmm. Well, more to come, man. We're, we're, we're about a month away from that match happening, but it's not going to be fun. You can bet your ass on that one. And uh, that's that. So Cornette, he just blew a whole lot of hot air, but he don't want to get on that scaffold. He's, cause he's still got something to say about it if you listen to him. We go from that. There's a match. Rick Rude, Manny Fernandez versus Kent Glover and Alan Martin. Rude and Manny win with ease very quickly. Doc, thoughts on the match? I like this tag team. Yeah, I do too. Good heel tag team. Do uh, Harper, anything from you? I think uh, I think uh, the Bull is probably just glad that they're really doing something uh, different with them. Probably so because Manny's kind of been. He just be kind of hanging around. Yeah. He's kind of, kind of your everyday face. Just hey. Yeah, he like he hadn't been buried or anything, but you're right. He's kind right. of just been hanging around. He needed he, something to freshen him up, and this is yes. It. Mm -hmm. That's exactly yeah. right. And, and people need to remember, like just a few years before this, I mean, he he's basically. I think I think he was. He just, this is before we started covering it, but he's like the number two face behind Dusty. Mm -hmm. If you really he go back, yeah. So it's a it, yeah. This kind of freshens them up. I mean, it's a, it's a change and it's good. So I'm I agree. Good good stuff there. Okay, 
So we go from that to uh, Paul Jones, Rick Rude, Manny Fernandez promo. I do want to play it because uh, Rude calls Wahoo a Skahu. Oh, God, that's great, man. Man, there's all kinds. Isn't this the one with all kinds of stuff in it? Yeah. yeah. Let me play it. I hope it doesn't freeze. Here it is. Here's Paul Jones, members of his army. You know, I learn something. You learn something every day. If you want bigger stars, if you want rougher men, you've got to pay the price. From now on, big money ball players is what I have right here. Now, let me tell you something. Rasky, you can't keep up with what I want. I demand a lot, and if you can't keep up, stay out of my hair. I don't ever want to see your face again. And then, you know, I'm looking at the Rock and Roll Express, and I'm looking at those two belts around these two giants. And you know something, Wahoo McDaniels? You're a big, tough man. You have a big reputation. But if you want to be <laughs> the man that's the savior, stay away from the Raging Bull. Because remember, you're going to have to look at the Raging Bull. And it's going to be from across the ring. Jimmy Valiant, the match is signed. You're going to be mine. Big Mama's going to be a bald headed geek in the morning when you get up. And you're eating your post toasties, and you look across at Big Mama, and she's looking at you, and you look at her, and she's a ball headed geek. She's gonna be the ugliest thing you ever seen in your life. You know something, Daddy? You know Wahoo McDaniel's the toughest man in professional wrestling. Comes out here, my man. Comes out here, boo boo boo, just whining and crying. I never thought I'd see the day, Wahoo, that you'd come out here and cry about something. Well, Daddy, me and you have been up the road, and now that I got the ravishing one, and you just saw an example of the awesome twosome, baby. We got a lot more to dish out, Indian. So if you want to stick your nose in my business, don't mess with a horn, baby. Because if he don't do it, I sure will take care of you and send you packing to your teepee, baby. That's right, squad. Who can't take nothing away from you. You lasted nine years in the NFL. You're one tough dude. Tough but just baby. remember, with Raging baby. Bull and Ravishing Rick Rude, you didn't last nine seconds. We embarrassed you in front of your whole tribe. Red man. Better a red man than a dead man. That's right. That's the roads. You get all the help you want. You bring Dusty on, Rhodes. Baby. You bring Ronnie Garvin. We'll see you next week, fans, Come on World Championship us. Wrestling. <laughs> Damn. Damn is right. And, uh, and to be honest, in a liar episode, this would have gotten a Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> Just across the board in sensitivity to our uh, conquered people from several hundred years ago. But, you know... The the S word for a Native American is like calling um, calling you someone's mama cunt, basically. The term we think Swamp. of a female, yeah, that's real bad stuff. Like I learned that the hard way one time. Uh, that that's not to be trifled with. They take that real seriously, and I almost got scalped once as a result. Right, eight. Manny told him he was sending back to his TP. Right. Yeah. Um, Squahoo, motherfucker. He called him Squahoo. Then he said, uh, Rue said Red Man. I was like, gosh. They're, yeah. just, they're just, then Manny's mocking him with the, woo, 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 woo. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, and then the crowd starts doing the, woo, woo, <laughs> which Damn I don't kids. even, right. <laughs> I don't think they realized what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> this shit got extra special at the end, bro. Oh, man. It sure, it sure did. It sent us out hot, and I appreciate it. Yeah, it's crazy. But okay. It, 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 the only bad thing is when uh, it's when uh, what's his name gets in and starts saying, "Oh, we'll bring in Dusty Rhodes and all." It's like, man, you fuck. <laughs> you should, well, should have just stopped right before that. Yeah. Well, they probably sense this thing getting off the rails a little. Bit. <laughs> this, this this shit. Yeah, this shit started. <laughs> Getting off the rails, it fell off the rails long before. <laughs> well, was... and Manny cut a good promo because he was short and sweet. 
you know, oh, we yeah. said this before. He didn't go on and on and on. It was really good. And then yeah. Rick, this was the this was the promo where I was like, yeah, Rick Rude could have never been the number two baby face right here. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's do some Rolex. Let's do some Rolexes. Doc uh, Well, are we gonna rate the episode or Rolex it? Uh well we can rate it. Go ahead, Doc. You rate it first. A to the plus, dude. I don't know what else you want out of 33 minutes of wrestling, but yeah. we had a major turn, a major historical angle, racism throughout, a couple of beatdowns. Yeah. Boogie uh, was on it. I'm what else? I mean, seriously. Yeah. What I else? What, I don't know what else you can give. I mean, I, a plus. Else. Yeah. yeah. Easily. And they didn't make me sit around for two hours for it either. 33 minutes. I know right. it's. It's got to be an A. Yeah, I'm going A+. Plus. I mean, the matches were fucking garbage, but, I mean, shit, so what? I ain't, here, for, I ain't here for a Matt Classic, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here for a Meltzer 5-star right now. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not, I'm just like, screw it. A+. Plus. Um, okay, so Rolex. Doc, you want to go first? No, no, I want to go last on this one. Okay, well, there's two. <laughs> I was tempted to give it to that last segment. <laughs> Cause it was so, Man, I'm telling you, so if, much of a if, train wreck. If so much other stuff <laughs> hadn't happened, that would have been the the winner hands down. There are episodes we've done in the past six weeks where there's no question that, that would have won. It. Oh yeah. Uh, but and then I thought about the dusty injury. I'm like that that could possibly get it. But oh yeah, fuck. But you know, so you got two candidates there, but it's it's hard to not give it to. And I don't know how to do this. I mean, because I think Dusty is a part of this. So I think you give it to, like, Dusty and Nikita. That whole, I think the whole angle, you got to give it to. I mean, you listen to that live crowd. I don't know how you don't give it to that segment. Yeah. Don't give it to that, that portion with to. the turn. Yeah, so I got to say Dusty and Nikita in, in the whole turn. I think this is yeah. a great audible. Uh, Harper, are you saying the same thing? Yeah, it's, you have to, man. Yeah, I don't know how you don't. So I mean, just give it to the crowd. Yeah, well, give it to the dude who's flexing when Dusty's on the top of the cage. <laughs> like Doc said earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to okay. go I'm going to go a little bit slightly very similar but slightly different. I'm going on a meta level here. So, everybody hold on. My Rolex winner is Dusty for all the reasons. He got crucified. He lost his wingman. He's booking this and he lost all those people. He he was the booker that said, let's try Nikita. He put his hand over Nikita's head and got that crowd to accept Nikita. Then he cut the promo later with you know about his best friend and, and really kind of telling America it was okay to to deal with Nikita as a person. He was all over the place doing big stuff. And he was behind the scenes having to figure out big stuff. So for the, all those reasons, I, man, I don't know sharing it with anybody. Big Dust gets it all. Something else to, to add. Dusty did say from the TBS studio when him and Nikita were being interviewed where it was kind of, it was kind of a boring promo. Uh, but Dusty did say it best. He said that him and Nikita didn't agree on everything and they still have their differences, but they have a common goal, which mm. was dealing with the horsemen. And I think that's, it's hard to undersell how important that was because basically the lead baby face, Dusty, is, you know, if he can accept this man in this fight against these criminals, let's face it, the horseman did some criminal shit multiple times over and over again, then you can accept him at least as we work towards this common goal. Um, which, ironically, this is 86 and this is 40 years past World War II which is ironically America and the Soviet Union actually did work together in World War II to defeat a common enemy. Um, I'm not saying that Dusty was inspired by World War II. I'm just saying it kind of like goes in line with what America had seen in their past. Did you get too. your associate's degree in social studies? Nah. <laughs> nah. Then can but we I've move always, on? I've always been infatuated with like the, the war effort and whatnot in World War II. That, what that happened, to, you? What that happened was, to your people back in the day? That was the greatest generation, um, in my opinion. Those kids that went over there and fucking stormed the beach at Normandy and all that. Great. That, 
That was yeah. a great. That was they hardcore were the history with M- Menace Mike Mills. Go fuck yourself, asshole. Hey, they had pal. a POW camp by uh by uh UNO back then. Are you serious? Yeah, like where that big they, stack is. They, a yeah, POW they, camp or an internment camp? No, they 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 held uh Japanese. Uh, That's an internment camp. Well, whatever. Aren't they prisoners <laughs> of war? No, they, they took like legit Japanese soldiers that were from that were captured and and they held them there. Like not like the guy put, down the street. Put that up your pipe and smoke it, Doc. Don't fuck with Hall for a while. He's trying to give you a history lesson. You yeah. think you're smart and everything, huh? You dipshit. Okay, let's move on. Uh, all right. So uh, Dusty gave us his Rolex. Well, and- this is certainly not as lowbrow and fun as Juicy Johnny, but what is? Boy, Juicy. <laughs> when they hear about y'all Juicy Johnny in a let's few weeks. Let's not say anything else, but y'all got a treat coming in a few weeks, people. <laughs> There's a y'all don't even mark. know. The Army don't even know what's coming for them. Boy, <laughs> that, that was the longest episode of Smoky Mountain Wrestling we ever did, and they're going to get a treat <laughs> by that one. They really are. <laughs> It's pretty damn incredible. It's fucking phenomenal is actually what it is. All right. um, So, uh, hey, I want to remind everyone, please use the Amazon referral link. It's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. Another way you can support the show on an ongoing basis. Use that. Bookmark it. Give it to your wives, girlfriends, anyone in your family who shops on Amazon. It, uh, we get a little bit of small kickback in return when you use it. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash Amazon. All right. I want to get us over to – I'm going to I'm – gonna, we're going to do two things on the backside and the close of the show. I want to give us get us over first to Tommy Noe, part one. Again, we're going to talk some Tim Horner. We're going to talk some uh, Brian Lee and Timmy Fitch and the, the debut and the pool the poolside press conference, I guess, is the best way to do it. So, uh, Doc and Hopper, hang tight. Let's get over to Tommy Noe, part one, and then uh, we'll come back and close the show out. we got we got a couple of things we got to square away, and uh, that's that. So, here's Tommy Noe. <laughs> 